In the name of our beloved Lord, Khuda bin Nur Maulana Shah Karim Lusseni Hazri Maam, please recite Salwaat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala Muhammad. First of all, we'd like to thank Namdar Tariqa Board for the UK for giving us the opportunity to deliver few vices during our private visit to the UK and also allowed us to interact with the Jamaat. They have been very kind and very generous to us. <coughs> As you have heard that tonight we are going to discuss the term spiritual enlightenment. We have heard repeatedly in the recent firmans of Malana Hazri Ma, the prayer for our success in search of spiritual enlightenment. What really is spiritual enlightenment? We'd like to find at least, we'd like to try to understand what it is meant by the spiritual enlightenment. It is a journey from darkness to light. And what is that darkness and what is that light? We know Allah has created us with two aspects of our life. Well, there are two uh, basic things in our life. One is our body and the other is our soul. Body is temporal, bound in time. Soul is eternal. The dignity, the honor, the status, highest status given to the mankind is not because of body, not because of our physical size. Elephant is much bigger than us. We have tigers, lions, much stronger than us, faster than us. There are animals who have much more enduring power than we human beings. So it is not because the size of our body. It is because the spirit, the soul of Allah, that Allah has given into us. That and it was not the physical body of mankind to whom the angels bowed down with the command of Allah. If you read the ayat given in the Holy Quran, it is very clear that Allah has put his soul, a part of his spirit into the mankind. Then he asked the angels to bow down. Remember when Allah said to the angels, I am going to create a mankind with dust, with soil. When I make him complete, وَنَفَخْتُ فِيهِ مِنْ رُوحِ And I blow my soul into it. And I blow my soul into it. فَقَعُ لَهُ سَاجِدِينَ Then you fall in front of it prostrating. So it is the soul, the spirit that Allah has put into us. That makes us human being and that makes us the best of creature, asanu taqwi, that Allah has said in the Quran. Pir Shams has very beautifully uh, mentioned in one of his ginans the two aspects. It's an allegorical language. Don't try to uh, read the literary side of it. Try to understand the allegorical or, and the symbolic message given into it. The ginan is Dandan Sami Raja to Sri Janhar Sainji, Seshtra Chai Shahamure, Dandukar Sainji. Bravo, my Lord, who have created mankind the best of creation. Then the story of creation goes Jai Malaik Mitti Kapan Laga Sainji. Allah ordered the angels to go and bring some, some, some land, some dust, so that He can create the mankind. So when with the command of Allah the angels went to cut the soil, Jai Malaik Mitti Kapan Laga Sainji, when the angels started to cut the land, 
मिट्टी रोवण लागी साई जी द लैंड द डस्ट स्टार्टेड टू क्राई सिंबॉलिकली सेइंग दैट इट्स न्यू व्हाट इज गोइंग टू हैपन हियर टू हिम मिट्टी रोवण लागी साई जी द एंजल सेज न रोवो मिट्टी मेरे शाद का फरमान हुआ साई जी डोंट क्राई we cannot help you because we are bound by the command of our lord narwa mitti mere shah da farman hua sai you don't cry it is the command of my lord we have to do it aaniyo paani bande da khameer machaya sai after bringing the soil and bringing some water they made the clay to prepare the statue of the mankind आनियो पानी बंदे का खमीर मचाया साई जी खमीर मचाया बंदे का बुत सदाया साई जी दैट क्ले वॉज वॉट एंड माई लॉर्ड मेड द फॉर्म ऑफ मैन काइंड वेन द फॉर्म वॉज रेडी लुक एट द ब्यूटी ऑफ द लैंग्वेज सते आसमान ने बंदे का रूह मंगाया साई my call the my lord call the soul but from where from the seventh heaven when the body was being created it was clay sand dust satya asmane bande da roo mangaya sai ji from the seventh heaven my lord call the soul वन वे रू अंदर का या कोठी छे तुम्हारी साई जी ओ सोल आई हैव प्रिपेयर्ड अ हाउस फॉर यू एंटर इन टू इट दिस इज योर अबोर्ड नाउ इफ यू गो टू रेंट ए हाउस और परचेज ए हाउस एट लीस्ट यू गो इन साइड फर्स्ट एंड लुक इन साइड वेदर इट इज लिवेबल और नॉट द सोल से ओ माय लॉर्ड कैन आई हैव लुक इन टू द हाउस वन वे रू अंदर काया कोठी छे तुम्हारी साई जी दिस इज योर हाउस गो एंड लिव इन साइड नाउ द रू है लुक इन साइड रू जुए तो आगड़ है अंधेरा साई जी द सोल लुक इन साइड ओ माई गॉड दिस इज ऑल डार्कनेस इन साइड रू जुए तो आगड़ है अंधेरा साई जी रू लुक इन साइड इज ओ माई लॉर्ड दिस इज ऑल डार्क इन ये नहीं चाहिए मन हमारा साई जी आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू एंटर इन टू दिस द सोल से ये नहीं चाहिए मन हमारा साई जी दिस इज नॉट माई हाउस आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू लिव इन टू इट बट ओ माई लॉर्ड सिंस इट इज योर कमांड आई हैव वन कंडीशन आई हैव वन कंडीशन ये नहीं चाहिए मन हमारा साई जी तेमा में वड़वू जो फरी काढ़ेगा साई जी आई विल गो विथ वन कंडीशन That this should not be my permanent abode. I will go inside with the condition that you will bring me out again. Kida call karar mere hanse da raja sain ji. The Lord of the souls gave His word. Fine, this is not going to be your permanent abode. I will take you out from it. Kida call karar mere hanse da raja sain ji. Dio the son banda dharm udhara sain ji. If you will offer your dasan and follow the religion, you will be saved from it. Symbolically, it is said that our spirit, our soul, is from the spiritual world. Our body is from from a place, or it is it's a place of darkness. So the soul has been put into a place which is in pitch darkness. and when we say inna lillahi it is the descension of the soul from the divine wa inna ilaihi rajiun we are in a journey back to the spiritual abode and for which we are working for which we are praying for which we are meditating and for which we are struggling so one should not forget that we are not physical being that have some or that as passing through a spiritual experience of this world we are the spiritual beings having a very short physical or worldly experience in this world this thought this understanding is very important this is the key for spiritual enlightenment 
that we are not physical beings in this world. We are basically spiritual beings. That's why we must always keep that thought in mind that we are soul. That is the eternal aspect of our life and not the physical aspect. Those who forget this essential reality of our life, Allah terms them as ghafil, oblivious, oblivion, those who forget. And how to come out of uh, this uh, forgetfulness is zikr. That we call zikr in Gujarati, we say jikr and zikr. Zikr means remembrance. Zikr means remembrance. Yaad karna. We cannot remember something or someone who has never been into our experience. We can never remember something new. Can you remember someone you have never met? Can you remember a place where you have never been to? So, with re even in English, you see, it is remember. Recognition is recognition. It is not something new. It is already there. We had experienced it. What we had experienced? We had, in fact, not only we experienced, but we bore witness to that reality. When Allah took the progeny of Adam from his loin and brought them all in front of him, and made them witness on themselves. Allah made us witness on ourselves and asked, Allah to be Rabbikum, am I not your Lord? Am I not your Lord? Kalu, everybody said, Bala, yes, Shahidna, we bear witness. We bear witness. Allah said, you, Do you know why I, I take this witness from you? And taqulu yawm al khiyamati, that you should not say on the day of judgment, inna kunna an hadha ghafilin, I was oblivious of this, I did not know that. I became forgetful of that reality. So ghafil is someone who forgets that reality. And zikr is the key which keeps us reminding again, again, and again. So you will Quran, in Quran you will find ghafla most of the time used against zikr. Zikr used against ghafla. Waskur rabba kafi nafsika. Remember the name of your Lord in your heart. Tazarru'an with humility. Wakhifatan and with fear. Dunal jahri min al qawl without uttering the sound. Bil ghuduwi wal asal. Morning and evening. Wala takum min al ghafilin. And do not be of the ghafil. So Allah says, do zikr and do not be of the ghafil. وَلَا تَكُونْ مَنْ أَقْفَلْنَا قَلْبَهُ أَنْ ذِكْرِنَا Do not be like the person who I made him forget my remembrance. So zikr is the key. Zikr is the practice which takes us from that darkness to the state of lightness. And that's why Allah repeatedly asks us in the Holy Quran, that keep on remembering. Allah calls those people as people of intellect. Those who remember Allah standing, reclining, standing, sitting or reclining. And they remember and they ponder, they contemplate on the creation of the universe. And by doing that, they say, Rabbana ma khalakta haza batila. My Lord, you have not created them meaningless. So, dhikr, remembrance of Allah, fikr, thinking all the time of Allah, is the way that takes us from darkness to the light. And what is the barakat of dhikr? Zikr is something that is not limited in time. Sometimes we become too 
uh, f- formalist, too much uh, quantifying thing. Don't take, uh, don't remember this name for too long. This is very heavy tasbih for it. Don't remember Hazri Imam too much, it disturbed Hazri Imam. Bapur na tasbih na kaadu, Hazri Imam kaam karta So don't, don't, don't remember this tasbih because it, it, uh, it pains Imam Azamat. Okay, then it's better not to remember him, let him rest. <laughs> if we go to the sun, have a sun bath, making ourselves warm, does it disturb sun? If you are taking the benefit of sunshine, does it disturb sun? If you go in the rain, does it, does it disturb the clouds? If we take oxygen, does it disturb the air around us? We cannot survive about, without this oxygen which is around us. So how can one think that don't remember Hazri Imam too much or don't take this tasbih too much, it, it disturbs Mawlana Hazri Imam. Allah says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu skurullaha dhikran kathiran. Agyar vak parvi gyara dafa pade, ke tetis dafa pade, ke ninety-nine dafa pade. These things are of congregational prayers. You have to have a limit in congregation. You cannot have indefinite numbers in congregation. There has to be discipline. But in our personal tasbih, Allah says, Uskurullaha dhikran kathiran. Oh believers, remember Allah, much remembrance. And even if we remember 24 hours, Allah says, you remember very little. There is, it is in the Quran. People remember Allah very little. People thank Allah very little. Even if you repeat Allah's name 24 hours, Allah says, you remember very little. So if that is little for Allah, then when he says, Uskurullah, dhikran, kasiran, remember me much more. So what is Allah's much more? You know that. Allah's one day is sometime 1,000 years of mankind, sometimes 50,000 years of mankind is one day of Allah. So if Allah says much, we know what Allah means by much. Tuskurullah dhikran kathiran wa sabbihuhu bukratan wa asila and remember his tasbih in the morning and in the evening. What will happen by that? Huwallazi yusalli alaykum. If you remember Allah like that and take the tasbih like that. Huwallazi yusalli alaykum wa malaikatahu Allah and His angels will recite salawat on you. We normally recite, read the ayat, Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi. Verily Allah and His, prof- and his uh, angels shower mercy on the Prophet. Based on this ayat, we say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. This is the ayat which asks us to say, Ya ayyuhal lazina amanu, sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. O believers, you also uh, pray for him and accept him with a thorough acceptance. So, where there, Allah says that Allah and his angels shower his blessings on the Prophet. Here Allah says that if you remember Allah much and say his tasbih in the morning and evening, Allah and his angels will shower mercy on you. What that mercy will do? You shall do now. Allah and his huwallazi yusalli alaykum malaikatuhu li yukhrijukum min al-zulumati ila nur so that he take you away from the darkness towards Light. He will take you out from the darkness. Ilan Nur take you towards the light. Another barakat of this zikr, Allah says in the Quran. Very small but very meaningful ayat. Fafkuruni Athkurkum. You remember me, I remember you. Faskuruni askurkum, you take my name, I will take your name. I say, Ya Allah, oh Allah will say, oh, Ya Sadruddin, Ya Badruddin, Ya Fatima, or Ya Yasmin. Huh? 
This is what this ayat means. I sent you a message, or Allah sent me a message. So we are in communication. Is I mean, our saying Ya Allah or our remembering Allah is the same that Allah remembers us, or in a, in in a more uh, say common term, is it or oh, is it the same if we remember Hazri Imam and Hazri Imam remembers us? Is the same? It is. The, oh, it, it comes on the same degree. No, there is a vast difference. Our remembrance of Allah is a different thing. But when Allah remembers the Abd, the servant, when Allah thinks of something, that things come into being from nothingness. وَإِذَا أَرَادَ شَيْئًا إِنَّمَا يَقُولُ اللَّهُ كُنْ فَيَكُونَ إِذَا أَرَادَ شَيْئًا When Allah thinks of something, He says, be and it becomes. So when Allah remembers someone, it is not the same when we remember Allah. When Allah remembers, Allah remembers that it means that He, he revives us from from the spiritual death to the spiritual life. He brings us from nothingness into being. I would recommend at this point to read the book Justice and Remembrance, The Spirituality of Maulana Ali, written by Reza Shah Kazmi and published by IIS. Justice and Remembrance, the Spirituality of Hazrat Maulana Ali. And, and read the chapter of remembrance because I'm talking of this chapter at the moment. But if you have, uh, if you are leaders, authority, people of authority, who, those who uh, control people, then must read the justice chapter also. Justice, remembrance and justice. Justice is also a very important chapter in that book. But remember, read the chapter of remembrance and see how the whole spiritual movement into the Islamic world emanated from the person of Hadrat Amirul Mumnin Mushkil Kusham Mola Murtaza Ali. So our tariqah throughout history has remained very much committed to the spiritual development of mankind. And this is the path that Imam of the time always uh, teaches us to follow. In our tariqah, the specific practice that Imam of the time has given us, those who want to seek spiritual elevation, is the Baitul Khayal. Baitul Khayal. Where Imam of the time gives us a word. Those who seek spiritual elevation approaches the Imam Imam gives them a word. That does not mean that those who have not taken a bowl or have not taken a word from the Imam, they cannot do bandagi or they, they cannot have a spiritual elevation. The time is there, early morning is, is for a spiritual elevation, this time has been given by God. But those who want to do bandagi, even if you don't have a word, you take any name of Allah, particular name given by the Imam in our Tasbihat, Allah, Muhammad. Imam said, remember, Ya Allah, Ya Muhammad, Ya Ali. But it is important to take a name. Because the Baitul Khayal, by Ibadat, Baitul Khayal, Bandagi is based on a name given by the Imam of the time. And why a name? Why to concentrate a name? Why to take the zikr of a name? What this name mechanism work? How it works? We know Allah is nameless. Subhana Rabbi ka Rabbil Izzati Amma Yasifun. We recite in the Quran, also in our prayers. Subhana Rabbi ka Rabbil Izzati Amma Yasifun. Allah is beyond the attribute that these people attribute to Allah. Whatever these people say about Allah, Allah is beyond everything. Subhanahu wa ta'ala Amma Yaquluna Uluwan Kabira. Whatever they are saying, Allah is beyond all these things. Then where does the name come? We are all born nameless. 
Did we born with a name tag attached to us? No. Nobody took birth in this world with a name printed on his body, sailed on his body. We are all born nameless. Nameless. But somebody gave us a name without taking our consent anyway. Somebody gave us the name. The parents gave, the Mukhi Kamariyas gave, Hazri Mam gave, society gave, but they chose to give us a name. They could have given the numbers to us also, but they decided to give us a name. Fine. We took the name and now we identify ourselves with the name. Somebody calls us with the name, though we are born nameless, but we respond with the name. Mr. So-and-so will immediately respond. But that is not our essential identity. That is something relative, given later on. But throughout our life, we respond with our name. So Allah himself is beyond attributes, beyond name. But that does not mean Allah is aloof from his creatures. He wants to create a, keep a relationship with the mankind. So he himself has given the name. Walillahil Asma'ul Husna Allah says, I have beautiful names. These names we have not given to Allah. Allah says, because if I remain nameless, then it will be difficult for you to contact your Creator. So, Lillahil Asma'ul Husna, Allah says that I have beautiful names. Fad'uhu biha. Remember Allah with those names. Because Naam leta, naami ko paave, aapa met, nij aap samave. When you, when you call a name, you, norm, you don't really call the name, you call the person. We're not interested in name. If somebody is Mr. A today, we call him A. But if he, some, if he change his name to B, we'll call him B tomorrow. We'll not call him A. And we're not interested in A or B, we are interested in the person we are calling. So it is not the name which is important. Naam leta nami ko pawe. It is the nami, the named musamma which is behind the ism. The entity which is behind the ism. That is really the objective. But name is a means to reach to that. So naam leta nami ko pawe. When you take the name, that name leads you to the Nami, the person who bears this name. Apa met nij aap samave. Gradually you annihilate yourself and you submerge yourself in the entity you are calling. So that is the mechanism of remembering the name of Allah while we are meditating. So this way of Concentrating on the name of Allah is very important so that we can gradually keep on progressing on the path of spiritual enlightenment, on the path of understanding and discovering our real self that is the spiritual aspect of our self. And as I said earlier, Getting up early in the morning for ibadat is very important. Many people feel that, oh, but this is not a user-friendly time. The time, if, uh, if Mawla wants me to do bangi, he should, be, he should consider what, is, what time suits me, not on his time. But Imam made it clear, remember, I have not come to you. Imam said once in his firma, look, I have not come to you. You have come to your Imam, so you have to follow the time that Imam of the time gives you. And Mawla said, because Imam feels that this is the best time for you, for your success in your search for spiritual enlightenment. And right from the beginning, you read the Holy Quran, Allah encourages believers to get up at night, middle of the night, early morning. Allah says in the, the day of judgment, the people, when people will be, will be taken to the paradise, others will ask, oh my Lord, who are these people who are going to paradise? Allah says, anil These are the people whose back remain, always remained 
aloof from the bed. I mean, these are the people whose backs are, they don't know what a bed means to them, which means they always remain away from sleep and they remembered Allah all throughout. And in the early morning, they used to ask for forgiveness of their sins. Quran says, those who seek forgiveness for their sins in early in the morning. And this time has been given by God himself in the Holy Quran. Because... Allah knows which time is best for mankind. Even to the Prophet Allah says, Inna laka fin nahari sabhan tawila. You have a lot of work to do during daytime. So at night, get up and remember your Lord and contemplate and concentrate on Allah. So that time of early morning is very important. Allah my Iqbal says that attar ho, rumi ho, razi ho, ghazali ho. Attar ho, rumi ho, razi ho, ghazali ho, whether it is Fariduddin Attar ho, Marana Rumi or Fakhruddin Razi or Zakaria Razi or Muhammad Ghazali, all these are Sufis and big scholars of Islam. Attar ho, rumi ho, razi ho, ghazali ho, kuch haath nahi aata be ahe seher gahi. Seher gah is the early morning. Ah is the supplication. Remember. कुछ हाथ नहीं आता बे आहे सहर गाहे ये जिक्र नीम शबी ये मुराकबे ये सुरूर जिक्र नीम शबी is the remembrance of at the mid of the night नीम शब is the middle of the night ये जिक्र नीम शबी this remembrance of middle of the night ये मुराकबे this meditation ये सुरूर this ecstasy this happiness, teri khudi ke nige ba nahi, to kuch bhi nahi. If these things are not the guardian of yourself, then your life is nothing. Then your life is nothing. I will like to end my talk with one beautiful prayer of Hazrat Imam Jafar Sadiq alayhi salatu wa salam. And before that, just one uh, quotation from the Talik of Imam Sultan Umar Shah Salwatullah Alehi Mala said on 18th of October 1956 in Istalika that however you must never forget that if material conditions change the spiritual conditions are not limited to this life and it is more essential to excel in spiritual progress it is more essential to excel in spiritual progress. Ultimately, you will find that it is your work for the next world that will help you in your worldly affairs. If you work for the next world, your, this world will automatically become easier. Because that is the real wealth. That is the real dhan. Apne man mein doop kar paja suragi zindagi. Deep, dive deep inside your heart and acquire the essence of your life. If you don't want to be mine, at least be of yourself. Man ki daulat haat aati hai, to phir jati nahi. That is the spiritual wealth, the wealth of inside. Man ki daulat haat aati hai to phir jati nahi. Tan ki daulat chhao hai. Aata hai dhan, jata hai dhan. The physical wealth is like shadow. It, it is there today, gone tomorrow. It's not essential. So concentrate on the real wealth of life that is spiritual. So we end with this prayer of Imam Jafar Sadiq alayhi salatu wa salam that will give us an understanding how Imam looks at the spiritual aspect of life. How Imam looks the aspect, the role of light in our life. How in our this living in this being we can we can become full of light in this world. So Imam Jafar Sadiq used to pray, Allahumma jal nuran fi qalbi. O my Lord, give me a light in my heart. Wanuran fi sami, light in my 
ear wa nuran fi basari and the light in my eyes wa nuran fi lisani and the light on my tongue wa nuran fi shari a light for my hair wa nuran fi bashari and the light for my skin wa nuran fi lahmi and light in my flesh wa nuran fi dami and light in my blood wa nuran fi izami and light in my bones wa nuran fi asabi and light in my veins and my nerves wa nuran min baini yadai and light in front of me wa nuran min khalfi and light from behind me wa nuran al yamini and light from right of me wa nuran ay yasari and light from left of me wa nuran min fawqi and light from above me wa nuran min tahti and light from under me allahum azzim li nuran o my lord increase light for me wa ni'matan and your bounties for me was sururan and happiness in my life for you so this is the prayer of the imam so we don't have to pray for anything else may maulana hazri imam always keep us on sirat mustaqim and may maula always guide us and help us on the path of spiritual enlightenment please recite the salawat allahumma salli ala muhammad